An Antillian manatee and her young calves spotted off the coast of Belize City, in between mangroves. They know they are safe here. Mangroves are of paramount importance to manatees due to the numerous benefits these coastal ecosystems offer to these gentle marine mammals. And of course, to many others too. But now, they are under threat by development. Mangroves and manatees, they go hand in hand. Um, it's critical for them for survival as it's their home. And a home is a place in which you live and which provides the things that you need in order for you to survive. So when you look at mangrove as it relates to manantis, it's not just a structural figure or something that provides just protection from wind, but it's their home. But now their home is under constant threat. Situated along the picturesque coastline of Belize, the vital ecosystem of mangroves hold a profound significance for the well-being and survival of the beloved manatees. These majestic marine mammals, often referred to as gentle giants, rely heavily on the intricate network of mangroves forests for their sustenance, protection, and overall existence. Jamal Galvez is a marine biologist who works for Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Institute headquartered in Florida. He has been working with manatees for most of his professional career, so much so that the public now knows him as Manatee Man, and the Manatee Man is extremely concerned that vast amounts of mangroves are being destroyed. It's already shown that we've seen areas that manatees used to occupy in the past. They no longer are there because those areas have lost um, significant vegetation as it relates to mangrove and seagrass. So that pushes them to find new spaces. But with the increase in development in Belize, all across the country, we're seeing mangrove devastation and destruction for development across the, across the coast of Belize. And that has limited space in which manatees have available for them to survive. Research conducted by Galvez in 2021 shows that there are an estimated 1,000 manatees in Belize's waters. The number keeps decreasing as the destruction of mangroves continues. According to Earth Sciences and Geography, 578.54 square kilometers of mangrove ecosystem area was identified and mapped in 2020, with 372.04 square kilometers located along the mainland coastal zone and 206.5 square kilometers distributed throughout the chain of islands and keys. And as the report found, mangroves within the Mesoamerican region are under considerable stress from both coastal development and natural threats, which resulted in mangrove cover declining by approximately 30% across the region between 1990 and 2010. Small patches of mangroves, like those around keys, are the most immediately threatened. One day I took some volunteers there to do some cleanup and uh, we normally do birding and whatnot there as well. And we were surprised to see, we were taken aback to see the amount of mangrove that was completely cleared for the development of the island, um, the key itself. And we, it was devastating. Honestly, I wanted to cry in that moment. Um, it, it was just sad to see. Monique Vernon is an environmental activist based in Placencia. She has witnessed firsthand the destruction of mangroves on the peninsula and what it means for biodiversity. This is definitely bad because it's driving a lot of wildlife from the, the community um, and it's also affecting the local wildlife in the lagoon itself. We have a lot of crocodiles and the West Indian manatee which we know is already their population is um, at risk right now. And so it's affecting the wildlife for sure. According to an action plan by the Belize Mangrove Alliance, a chapter of the Global Mangroves Alliance, which is primarily made of environmental NGOs, in 2019, approximately 12,800 hectares of mangrove were under protection. Only 16.6% of the total mangrove coverage in Belize. Considering the high value and importance placed on this ecosystem and the increasing pressure it faces, there is a recognized need to increase focus on ensuring its long-term viability. This is especially true as Belize begins to focus on boosting its blue economy. Andrew Perez is the Minister of the Blue Economy. According to the United Nations, the blue economy comprises a range of economic sectors and related policies that together determine whether the use of ocean resources is sustainable. Mangroves are important to the blue economy, and the Ministry says mangroves play a vital role by serving as critical fish nurseries, supporting tourism, and providing coastal protection. And there's wealth untold, hundreds of millions of dollars, possibly from a climate perspective. Mangroves contribute to carbon sequestration. The value of the mangroves in terms of carbon sequestration, um, I think the most important thing is more than a forest. The mangroves do it um, 
the carbon sequestration occurs with the mangroves and seagrass are two important factors that um, must be preserved. Um, yes, there's development occurring, but the value that these two um, seagrass and mangroves con contribute, uh, we cannot be forgetting. What we found out in recent assessment is that mangrove storage, both above ground in the carbon biomass and as well as in the soil, actually sequesters six or seven times more carbon than terrestrial um, trees or forests, you know, secondary forests and other forests. Um, so mangroves actually sequester way more carbon than, than does, and so that, that, than the terrestrial um, side. And so there's significant benefits to protecting these mangroves, again, in terms of our fight to climate change. The development of this country has to be done in a very sustainable manner, that when the developers come in, they must take them into consideration, some kind of preservation of the mangroves. You cannot come in here and clear totally with the mangroves. And it is an ongoing problem. It, ha it is not happening yesterday or today. It has been happening for decades now. So we are in a present real danger right now as a country. If we lose mangrove, particularly at the rates that we're losing them now due to coastal development and, and other areas, then we lose the storm surge protection, the coastal protection functions that they provide. We lose the environmental benefits that they provide in terms of nursery to important marine habitats. So for example, there's a, there's a ripple effect in terms of our marine health or marine species that we depend on, that coastal communities depend on. So again, if we, there, there's a direct connection to the social benefits that they provide. Um, and then financially, they're important for uh, tourism. They're important for, again, the coastal protection resources that we provide. CEO in the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Dr. Kenrick Williams, says that Belize has a healthy population of mangroves with only 3% loss over the last 20 years. It was not immediately certain whether he referred only to the area under legal protection. The Forest Department holds jurisdiction over mangroves, governed by the Forest Protection of Mangroves Act, which aims to safeguard these ecosystems by prohibiting their clearance, a modification without the required permits and authorization. The Act imposes penalties and fines for non-compliance, but it also acknowledges that enforcement challenges need resolution before these measures can effectively serve as deterrence. Successfully addressing enforcement issues and securing a conviction in the first case will be crucial to establish the Act's credibility and efficacy in protecting mangroves. A lot still to be done. The Forest Department is, you know, is increasingly giving, giving attention to mangroves now. Um, in fact, we've been working closely with them in terms of looking at how we can promote um, better actions in, as it relates to the conservation of mangroves and um, restoration of mangroves. We had worked with them to take the, the, <coughs> the mangrove regulation that currently exists which, as you know, legislations are written in a very technical manner, not easily digestible. So we took that and create a reader-friendly summary of that. And we, um, we share that we are working with them to disseminate that across coastal Belize um, to land developers, to local communities, so they are aware of what's in the regulation and so they, they can report back when they see infractions. We are also working with the Forest Department now to try and develop a national mangrove restoration plan that highlights where, you know, along the coast, the vulnerable locations where we can work with the local communities um, and partners to try and restore the area. So th these kind of work, uh, they are still in the early stage in terms of the restoration. In fact, we just um, created the terms of reference for a consultancy to help us develop such a national plan for mangroves. Um, they have um, recently gotten money from the new... Um, Trust the um, the Belize Fund for a Sus for a Sustainable Future to, to look more also at looking at Belize blue carbon potential because there's a potential market for that and as a country um, the government is interested in looking at what is there in terms of carbon from both uh, the blue carbon and from upland forests um, and so having these information can help make the case for why we need to um, protect our ecosystems and hopefully you know incentivize the government to do the right thing. Um, and to help is still enough of our natural environment where possible now, where there are sensitive ecosystems, where the coastline is very vulnerable, that a development might not be suitable for that particular area. So they need to think more integratively, you know, more holistically as we think, as we move forward into the future, if we are to truly try to um, effectively manage and, you know, and conserve these um, ecosystems. According to the Worldwide Fund Country Representative Nadia Bud. The economic potential of mangroves is estimated at more than half a billion U.S. dollars. Belize's national targets include protecting an additional 6,000 hectares of mangroves by 2025, 
restoring 2,000 hectares, halting and reversing net mangrove loss, assessing below-ground carbon stock, and exploring financing options for mangrove protection and restoration. Local NGOs like Reef Keepers Belize, environmental activists, businesses, and government departments such as the Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute have been partnering to plant mangroves in vulnerable areas such as Gavski and Saltwater Marine Reserve. In this instance, we're using the bamboo. We're not using PVC pipe because in case of a hurricane, we're, we know that the structures out here are not solid enough to handle a hurricane. So we're using the bamboo in case of that, that if it floats away, it, it's going to deteriorate in the environment, unlike the plastics. So um, in planting the, the mangroves, we're using the, some, some sort of the rally encasement method. I say some sort because I have altered it slight due to the, to the area that we're working in. And so basically the rally encasement method is just using a wrong surface to capture, the, um, to hold the proper goods in place. And it, it, um, you have to cut the, the slit all the way through from the bottom to the top. In this case, all the slit, the bottom part, because I don't want the um, bamboo to open all the way. Mm. So that's why I said some sort. Um, so basically, we're just going to stick the bamboo in the ground and fill it Put about three to four inches of sand because we're not trying to raise the sea the sea level yeah. we just need enough sand that it can grab root and could um, go from there Gavski really is one of the tiny islands one of our jewels that is really um vulnerable or more vulnerable i should say it really has a dynamic beach you will come at one time and the beach has shifted so it has a natural um natural dynamics but under over the past several years we have been noticing impacts in terms of the the increasing rate of erosion um, as a result of storm damage and so we are here today we identified you know we have recently done infrastructure upgrades but everyone wants to know what are you doing to help to bring back the beach to help to protect the island and so this is one of the measures that we identified along with Bowen that we can help to contribute and also um, protect some of the infrastructure that's here on the island. In 2012, I came to help Southwater Key Marine Reserve start their education program. And, and our thought was that kids needed more information or they needed booklets. But then we started realizing that it was really important for kids actually to get out here and see the marine reserve and see the environment firsthand. So, our thought is that if kids can see and experience and touch and learn to love the marine environment, then, then, then they'll protect it for future generations. And that's what we're trying to encourage. So we're doing a little mangrove restoration as well too. But can there be a balance between development and destruction? With so many proposed port projects in the Belize district, threatening mangroves ecosystem, can there be a true balance? I think it's, it's, it's going to, continuously be a challenge as we try to balance development as well as environmental protection as well as we try to restore in some critical areas. I think if we get the developers and we get the Belizeans to understand that we don't have to clear cut, we're going to be in a better position. Development, we can't really avoid it because people will continue having babies. Uh, the population will keep growing so we cannot avoid development. I think what we should more look into is um, sustainable development. There can be a balance but it's very tricky because it's hard to to change people's mind from a business perspective to a more of a sustainable type of um, way of living. Um, so it would take some time but I think it's definitely achievable. There has to be a balance. Um, an ecosystem is important to an economy. An economy will collapse if an ecosystem dies. So it, there has to be some way that we can sort of develop in a more sustainable way. But if we're destroying the very same thing that they come here for, then we're going to have another economic collapse. It cannot be that blue economy is going to be an environmental economy. At the same time, it is not only a fully economy-based um, uh, ministry. Uh, it's a combination of both. 
And combination of both means that we must work with develop developers anywhere that they want to do the, the development of our waters, of our shores. But at the same time, it also is that we have to find that balance in preserving not only the beach, not only the coast, not only the, the mangroves, but also our fishing waters. I firmly believe that there could be a balance between development and conservation. And as a conservation organization, we, we try to put you, you know, we, we, we worry about the environment, but we also worry about human needs and human desires so that there could be, you know, win-win along the way. The updated Nationally Determined Contributions, NDC, report identifies mangroves as a vital component of Belize's forests. As a small island development state, Belize acknowledges the importance of coastal ecosystems for the well-being of people and the planet. Mangroves are recognized as nature-based solutions to climate change with multiple benefits in mitigation, adaptation, and resilience. They sequester substantial carbon, mitigate flooding in low-lying areas, protect communities and infrastructure for climate impacts, and foster resilience, making them a triple win for Belize. Reporting for News 5, I am Hippolyta Novello.